There's a hymn called He Lives, and there's a line in it that goes, You ask me how I know He lives, He lives within my heart. Is that a biblically sound answer? Why or why not? Yeah, Christ in us, the hope of glory, is what Paul uh, holds out to the Colossians for the reason to have hope. So, in a very real sense, Christ does live within us through the Holy Spirit who has sealed believers for the day of redemption. Um, now, by heart, is the best way to know that you live or that Christ exists by looking within? I would say absolutely not. The best way to know that Christ lives is to look outside of ourselves to God who has given His Son for us in the Gospel. Uh, he lives not primarily within my heart, but He lived <clears throat> excuse me, in history, in first century Galilee. He lived and He came to save sinners, and that's objectively um, given to us in the Scriptures. And so I'd say primarily don't look within the heart, but ultimately look you know, outside of yourself to Christ as He's given to you in the Gospel. You know, Jason, I had to laugh when that uh, question was uh, was asked. I remember riding my bike with my father after a uh, Sunday afternoon. Now, some people in the Sabbath wouldn't allow them to do that, but I had a looser <laughs> family Sabbath, <laughs> and uh, we were riding our bikes. And, uh, and and I remember that song being sung earlier in, in the church service that morning, and, and I and asked my dad about it. I said, you know, what... what uh, what does that mean? It doesn't make sense to say Jesus just lives in my heart. And, mm. and uh, I don't even remember what his answer was, but I remember it always being a question throughout my life. You know what? Mm. And it kind of brings together those those two things: the 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 objective and the subjective. Uh, what God has done for us in Christ, and then what God has done uh, for us within us. And both are taught in Scripture mm. that. Uh, uh, but I would say that you 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 wouldn't want to. St- I think what what bothers me about that line is it seems to just uh, put all the eggs in one basket of experience, and uh, it's it's not. A, we, we believe because God has revealed uh, and has acted in in time and in space uh, and, and and accomplished our redemption in Christ, and and that affects us. Totally in our experience, completely, uh, completely. You know, the, yeah, but but it's not. But our hope is not in what we think we believe or feel in our heart. Our hope is in Christ and His work for us in His life and death and resurrection. Yeah, you make a great point. I mean, when Christ was a he uh, was resurrected, He appears to the apostles right before He gives the Great Commission, and it says that He's there in front of them, yeah. resurrected body. And it says that some of the eleven, Judas is no longer with them. Some of them believe, and others doubt. Yeah. <laughs> so, if they have a hard enough time believing Christ outside of them in history because of all the traumatic experience they had been through on account of his death and their own plans for what they thought he was going to do, how hard is it to only look within our own hearts based on our own sin or yeah. the struggles that we have in our lives or the fact that God? may not have come through for us in the way that we thought he should have in an area of suffering or a challenging circumstance in life. And so the subjective is huge. Christ is our joy. He's our hope. He's with us, never leaving us nor forsaking us. But that objective needs to be held uh, in just as high regard, if not higher regard, um, because he's revealed himself so clearly in Scripture and, and so wonderfully in the Gospel that he not lives within our heart but for us right. at the right hand of the Father. And it seems like some Christians emphasize one or the other, you know, if it's all experience or, or all just uh, uh, the objective word. And, and I think in Scripture we find that both are, are there and both are important. We are uh, people who need to have good reason for why we believe. We, mm-hmm. God has made us that way in His image to think through things. But He's also made us experiential and Emotional, and and he wants us to respond to him in both ways. Uh, so, part of the, the proof will be both. Paul says that his spirit testifies with our spirit that we are uh, his his very children. And so, there is an internal testimony of the spirit in our experience. But it's not the only way we know. Uh, 
And I would say even it's not the primary one. It's the, the first, uh, the, the objective is why our experience is what it is. Mm-hmm. Because Christ has yeah. come and lived for us, then therefore we can experience him uh, in our, our lives today. I remember you, we were talking about First John a couple of years ago, and you were telling me that it's primarily about assurance. Uh, this new church, they've gone through a schism or a split, all based on who Christ was. Some didn't think he came in the flesh. And there's five things of assurance John gives them. I won't go into them. Some are theological, social, are you loving the brethren, are ethical, are you practicing righteousness, ecclesial, are you still going to church? But the subject of one is one of the five. Yeah. It's not the primary one, but it's the spirit testifying that Christ exists and that you belong to him. Yeah. But he doesn't just focus on the subjective. So you're, you're right. We need to hold those in tension. <laughs> mm-hmm. Some of us can go fall off one side of the horse, others on off the other side of the horse. And yeah. the way that gets held in balance is by patiently attending to what God's revealed and, and yeah. trying to hold fast to that. Yeah.